The year is 2005, and Doom proved that audiences were just not ready for a first-person movie. This is also the year when Kathy Griffin documented her life on the D-list, Hurricane Katrina left most of New Orleans flooded, and the Pussycat Dolls scratched their way into the top 10 list with a Tori Alamaze cover. But we're not here to wish for hotter girlfriends, because don't you know that we're counting down Electronic Emmy Monthly's worst reviewed games of 2005. Yeah, let's make this place sizzle like a summertime cookout. If you watched me count down the best reviewed games of 2005, then you might remember when I said that for the first time in close to a decade, no games earned a perfect average of 10 out of 10. Now, this might give you the impression that review scores were down this year, but that was not the case. The truth is, 2005 averaged a score of 7 out of 10, which is only a tenth of a point away from the all-time high of 7.1. As a result of the generally higher scores, you see some of the more middling titles making their way into the worst reviewed list. A perfect example of this is Gun Griffin Allied Strike on the Xbox, which would not have made it onto a countdown like this in any other year. With an average score of 3.5 out of 10, it's only the 187th worst review game in EGM's history. Far from the usual dreck that we normally talk about here. If it had only come out in 2004 or maybe 2006, it would merely be a bad game and not one of the worst. John D zeroes right in on the problem. Allied Strike would be a mess even if the Xbox didn't already host a few very capable, if not exemplary, mech games for comparison. Choose a polygonal, drab, walking tank from a lineup of increasingly more polygonal, drab tanks and outfit it with your pick of a small handful of stunningly similar guns. Then take it out for a spin in the field where the norm is a vast brown, tan, or green landscape dotted with vague elevation changes and 2D trees and fences you can walk right through. Not over, through. Kevin liked it enough to give it a 5 but wondered, What's the point, especially when your friends are tearing it up with Mech Assault 2 on Xbox Live? On a system full of high-profile mech games, Gun Griffin Allied Strike is the worst. When we look at the history, it shows that Electronic Emmy Monthly was slow to warm up to the types of genres that you normally wouldn't associate with consoles. You saw this when they reviewed point-and-click adventure games, government simulators, and even board games. Now, thanks to Sprung, you can add Dating Sim to that list. While the idea of flirting with virtual characters may be a little bit more common these days, it wasn't the kind of thing that the EGM editors were used to reviewing in 2005. As a result, the scores were decidedly mixed. Shane applauded Ubisoft for taking the initiative to wade into the untested waters of the dating game genre, but ultimately found Sprung to be more frustrating than fun. In most levels, there's only one dialogue path that doesn't end in game over, so Sprung quickly turns into repetitive guesswork. It's an interesting experiment for the teen people crowd, but one that begs for improvements. Crispin wasn't even that charitable, giving the game a 1 out of 10 and arguing that the game constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. Let's hope future anthropologists never dig up Sprung, lest they deduce the 21st century dating involved put-down contests, rote memorization of conversations, and the exchanging of dead fish and lint brushes. Worse, they'll get the impression that we bought any awful game that launched alongside a new system. With an average score of 3.3 out of 10, Electronic Gaming Monthly ended up swiping left on Sprung. Between 1989 and 2009, Electronic Gaming Monthly reviewed a total of 134 puzzle games spanning two dozen different consoles. They may have disappeared lines, popped bubbles, and choo-choo rocketed, but in all that time, they didn't play a puzzler worse than Smart Bomb. That's right, with an average score of 2.8 out of 10. 
This completely forgettable PSP release is officially EGM's worst reviewed puzzle game of all time. To Christian, this game wasn't merely bad, but it was actually depressing. Even if it were done well, its unambitious collection of logic puzzles would still be stale. But the painfully restrictive time limits and sluggish controls pushes it well beyond my tolerance, while the die and retry gameplay only makes it worse. Sheen concluded that the makers of Smart Bomb are just trolling you. The developers have even engineered shocking new methods of making the game less enjoyable. First, you can actually die in the menu while choosing the next puzzle thanks to an ever-present countdown timer. Next, the torturous boss encounters boil down to vague trial and error defusing and strict time limits. Prepare to replay these levels a few times. He concluded the PSP owners should stick with Luminous, which is honestly sound advice. With an average score of 2.8 out of 10, Smart Bomb isn't just a terrible puzzle game, it's the very bottom of the barrel. Despite having a stellar lineup, there were signs early on that the PlayStation Portable might be a dumping ground for terrible games. You got a taste of that with Smart Bomb, but Rengoku the Tower of Purgatory is the main course. With an average score of 2.3 out of 10, this offensively repetitive action game is the magazine's lowest scoring PSP game. And I don't mean the lowest scoring of 2005, but rather of all time. In fact, out of the 112 reviews, EGM has Rengoku and Smart Bomb as the system's two worst games. Oof, it's like this was a year full of dubious honors. Dana tried to get to the bottom of what made this game so terrible. There are a lot of things to dislike about Rengoku, but I'll start with the fact that it seems like it was developed for the PlayStation 2 and then ported to the PSP with no thought of how the two systems differ. The scale is so small that it's hard to see your opponents and the detail of your robot are lost in the mostly dark, repetitive environments. Speaking of repetitive, the game's monotony was Shane's principal complaint. One of Halo's designers once said that a great game is actually the same 15 seconds or so of gameplay over and over. Apparently, when they created Rengoku, a dull, clunky action title so repetitive you almost get the feeling the developers at Hudson Soft took Halo's designer literally. He concluded his review by agreeing with one of the game's villains, who said, Everything that happens in this tower is pointless. Nothing but endless destruction and warfare. Yeah, with self-aware writing like that, Hudson had to see the low scores coming. Rengoku, the Tower of Purgatory, landed on the PSP with a thud and an average score of 2.3 out of 10. We've talked about a lot of bad games in this series, but none of them are worse than Ping Pals on the Nintendo DS. In fact, this is not only Electronic Gaming Monthly's worst reviewed game of 2005, but it's also their lowest scoring game of all time. It's a game so bad that two different critics gave it zeros. So bad that it actually rated lower than a game that was ripped off the shelves after only a few months for having underage nudity. That's right, a game this bad can only be Ping Pals. A first-generation Nintendo DS release that is so absolutely terrible that some of the EGM editors question if it's even a game. Let's go ahead and let Shane explain why Ping Pals deserves the lowest score possible. What's next on THQ's DS agenda? Clock? Seriously, Ping Pals attempts to replace Nintendo's own pack-in for free PictoChat but fails to offer any incentive for users to choose it over what they already have. Brat-style avatars feel pointless, and the multiplayer games could easily be duplicated by creative picto-chatters. An abysmal failure. Kevin expounded on the problem by arguing that the built-in picto-chat is actually better than this standalone game. The text window's bigger, the keys are easier to press, and you can tap out messages with the control pad. 
a feature strangely missing in publisher THQ's game. Like Shane and Kevin, Brian was confused why THQ would even release a chat program when one comes installed on the DS. That said, he notes that even if Nintendo's chat program weren't a freebie, I wouldn't consider picking up a copy of Ping Pals. The interface is inferior, the mini games are worthless, and what's the fun in messaging AI friends? This is one of those rare times when Kevin's 1.5 out of 10 review would be considered a high score. With zeros flung around left and right, Ping Pals averages the embarrassingly low score of 0.5, officially making it Electronic Gaming Monthly's worst reviewed game of all time. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Electronic Gaming Monthly's Best and Worst. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we'll be posting new episodes leading up to the new year. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your least favorite game of 2005? Like I said, 2005 was overall a pretty solid year, but there were a few clunkers. I mean, this was the year that gave us 187, Ride or Die, Playboy the Mansion, and that awful Splinter Cell game on the DS. Oh man, that was terrible. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back next week with, you guessed it, the best and worst reviewed games of 2006. We're nearing the end here, folks. There are only six more episodes left in this entire series. If you want to see how this show ends, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.